Today we are going to talk about mental health issues in childhood and adolescence. Uh, as a child and adolescent psychiatrist, um, the usual presentation that I see in my clinics with uh, parents, so children of this age group, are usually problems with studies and problems in school. So the main issues that they present is school problems and sometimes behavioral issues. What is important to understand that the presentation may be the same, but the reasons could be varied. The usual problems that we find, the reasons for these symptomatology could be behavioral, could be emotional, could be actually learning difficulties, and could be related to other issues, maybe family, maybe uh, lots of emotional trauma, separation of parents, things like that. Now, as far as behavioral issues are concerned, the main things that come up uh, diagnostically is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, autism spectrum disorder, and ODD is oppositional defined disorder. It is possible that a child can have a combination of all three or two or any of the different permutation and combination. Now, what is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder? As the name says, the core feature is attention deficit. Most male children will also have hyperactivity. But the hyperactivity goes away usually by the age of about 10 to 11 years. Uh, but with female children, they usually do not have the hyperactivity. So sadly, they are less to be recognized or treated. Because they don't cause a problem in the classroom, their education suffers. And through that, their confidence and abilities. Whatever they know also, they cannot do. So that is attention deficit. Second is autism spectrum disorder, which is a disorder of social communication. It is a, not a disorder of intelligence. It is not a disorder of any other thing. People think that autism, disorder people, autism spectrum disorder people are dumb. Many, many times their IQ is quite good. But they have a social communication problem and many of them have learned language problems. So that leads to a lot of learning problems. The next issue that comes is the oppositional defined disorder. What is oppositional defined disorder? It's basically we've all heard that Ami Akta Bolchi or Bacha Ornata Kore. Kokono Kota So that is that the height of it is oppositional defined disorder. So these people present with <coughs> This symptomatology mostly at home, but many of them actually are quite okay in school. So they may people might say they are hyper, hyper. They use things like they are overactive, they're very restless, they don't listen. But interestingly, the same children are okay in school. So then, what we have to see that this thing is not pervasive. It happens only in certain situations. So it is not something that comes from within. It happens because of the environment. So how do we manage it? By changing the environment. It's easy to say but difficult to do. So now then we move to the <coughs> things like emotional disorders that present, which have the present again the same problems of learning, of operational problem, the usual issues. The emotional disorder, what do we mean by emotional disorders? Things like separation anxiety disorder, people don't want to go to school, they are usually actually good in studies. But they don't go to school, so obviously they don't go to studies. Secondly, they have things like depression. They might have uh, things like presentations of somatic problems of, you know, belly aches, headaches, back aches, quite common in this group. And it's a known fact that depression, anxiety disorders present in the extremes of age, like childhood or old age, with somatic problems. So these again will lead to study issues. Then we come to the issue of actually learning difficulties. What is important to understand that learning difficulty is not many times related to IQ. There might be there are a lot of people who have a good IQ, but they have learned because of specific learning difficulties. There's another thing called learning disabilities, which actually used to be called as mental retardation. So those people have an IQ problem, but politically. This thing is wrong to say nowadays about mental retardation, so we call them learning disabilities. 
But the other point, point I'm talking about is the learning difficulty. So the IQ is fine, the basic concepts and all that are fine, but they are not able to learn. And it's very difficult for parents to accept this. My child is bright, can remember so many things, but cannot learn. What is important to understand that there is something, the different parts of the brains do things differently. So learning is one part of it and maybe that part is not okay. Say a person who is musically deaf, who does not understand music. However much you try for them to understand music, they cannot. So if they lived in a world which, where communication happened by music, then they would have failed. Same way, these children cannot learn. So people have to accept that, they, you know, structured learning is difficult for them. But they can do other things. And I'm not saying that they should not be sent to school or anything like that, but there are ways to help them to learn better, but they will never make a, a career out of academics. There are a lot of other ways you can make your career, so let us open our minds to that. So that is the other issue. Then we come to the last but not the least of the problems of the emotional disorders which are uh, you know, uh, addressed because of environmental issues like parental separation, severe domestic violence, abuse, all these things. So when you see a child presenting with study issues, which is quite often in my clinic, one has to look at the whole rigmarole. Very few parents do present with uh, parent because with uh, children who are not willing to mix with people, which is a very good thing to make, pick up because social development is a very important part of our development. I hope more parents would come with that issue and understand that, uh, you know, mix, mixing is very important. Our society, the my parents have to say, my parents have to say, my parents have to say, my parents have to which is not correct. But you think blind no, no, my child doesn't mix because everybody is horrible. That's not true. You may not make the best of friends, but you will make friends. Peers, understanding, getting on is very important. So please be aware that, you know, that is also a very important issue to present. Not just learning problem, but socialization problems are very, very important. And then, of course, there are so many other problems that we can talk about that you present that uh, it is important to uh, kind of classify and to think. Now, if you just go to the basic idea of management, if all these things that we see, especially younger children, need very dictatorial parenting. In me, I don't mean hitting, shouting, screaming, but I mean firm and consistent disciplining, having good times together, having <coughs> punishment, for bad behavior and reward for good behavior. This is the very basics of parenting, which can be followed for every child. And that will help us in managing many of these.